Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to talk about how to use parameters in our methods. We're going to talk about what a parameter is, and we're going to go over the syntax of using parameters, and then we're going to talk about how parameters actually get passed to a method, uh, which is a concept called pass by value. So, what's a parameter? Um, your book, when it talks about parameters, it just says they're the inputs to the method. Uh, which, uh, what does that mean? What it means is a parameter is a value um, that you have to supply to a method in order for it to work properly. It's a piece of information that the method needs in order to work. So just as an example, if you think about it from English, if I was to say to you, hey, what's the square root? That wouldn't make any sense, right? You'd have to say something like, what's the square root of 25? So in that case, 25 is the parameter to the square root function. And uh, there are a lot of cases like that where you have methods that need input in order to work properly. Now the syntax of parameters is uh, something that's very important to understand. Every parameter for a method goes in the parentheses and you list them out with commas just like you see there. The uh, square brackets in that notation there just so you know means that those are optional uh, because you can have a method with no parameters which we'll take a look at in a second. Now as far as the actual parameter uh, definition inside the parentheses you will see that every parameter uh, in the parentheses of the definition of the method has a type and a name, just like any other variable that you're used to creating. In this case, for example, root has one parameter, the name of the parameter is A, and the type of the parameter is double, because you're going to give a number to the method and it's going to take the square root of that number. When you use a method, this is the most important part of this lesson, you have to make sure that whatever you put in the parentheses for each parameter is some expression that evaluates to the correct type for that parameter. So in this case you can see an example where you just put a value in the parentheses like math.square root of 16 or you can use a variable um, that can evaluate to the proper type like um, if you have a num variable and then you put that num variable in the parentheses that would work fine. What doesn't work is if you put a value in the parentheses that's the wrong type. So if I had string hello and I tried to say math.square root of hello, you'd get a syntax error because you have to match the type of the parameter. As far as how many parameters you can have, remember that in that uh, definition we list them out by commas and then there's a dot 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 at the end, meaning you can have as many as you want. There are a lot of methods that have no parameters, like if you're just uh, calling to uppercase, you're just modifying the string. You don't need to tell it anything else. Then there are some methods that have one parameter, and then there are some methods that have lots of parameters. It really just kind of depends on how much information the method needs in order to work. The last concept, which is a little hard for new programs to understand, but is really important, is this concept of pass by value. In Java, pass by every variable that you put in the parentheses for a method is passed by value. And what that means is that you're not actually passing the variable itself to the method. You're just passing its value. You can think about it like a copy. And we'll see an example of this. But what this means is, even if you pass a variable to a method, you can't use that method to change the variable outside of the method. Uh, so let's take a look at an example of that. I think you'll see what I mean. So here's a class. It's got a method in it called double me, which takes how many parameters? It takes one parameter. Name is val, and type is double. And what it does is it takes that parameter multiplies it by 2, and we've got some extra printout statements to see what's happening. But I want you to, we're going to run this through the debugger, and I want you to pay close attention to what's happening. So, start off, and notice we have a local variable inside of main called num, which we set equal to 42, and now we're going to pass that uh, variable by value to the method double me. So we're going to take a copy of the value of num and we're going to pass it into the method and it's going to get stored in this parameter named val. So notice that val is equal to 42 and num is equal to 42, but those are not the same variable. Those are two different variables. So now when we multiply val by 2 and it turns from 42 into 84, notice that back in main nothing has happened to the variable named num. And by the way, it doesn't matter that they have different names or even the same name. If the parameter was named num, we still wouldn't change the value. So watch what happens here. So inside of the method, 
The first value of val was 42, and the last value of val was 84. But when we exit the method and come back into main, watch what happens when we print the value of num. It's still 42, because again, the method can't change the value of the variable we gave it, because we didn't actually give it the variable. We just gave it its value. And it's really important to remember that every variable um, in Java is passed by value as a parameter. So in addition to that, the most important thing to remember from this lesson is the syntax for passing parameters. Each one looks like a variable, has a name and a type, and you can have a method with as many or as few parameters as you need. Okay.